Okay, today I'm going to explore with you this new to me um, technology resource that I found called Nearpod. This was actually introduced to me by my dad who works at an inner city school in St. Louis. He says that he uses this with his kids all the time and that they love it. So we're going to just take a little tour today and show you. So this is the home screen when you get here. You can sign in, you can enter a code to join a live session, or you can create your free account right here. I've already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Okay, when you sign in, this is what you're going to see. When you first sign in, they're going to take you through different ways to get to know the site. But I've already been here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my library. These are all lessons that it were shown to me. I did not create these lessons. You can choose to create a lesson or you can just explore their library and add it to your own. So here are different lessons. You go through different subjects. Now we can click on science. And when you first create your account, it will ask you what grade level you teach and what you teach and that will filter your library so you can see there are some that cost money but you can go ahead and hit a filter and hit free and hit search and it'll give you all these options on free resources to check out okay let's go ahead and go back to my library so in third grade we always explore communities so we are going to go ahead and open this up so this is the code your students would use on their one-to-one -one device if they were participating. And then it looks just like this, and it will take you. So this is exploring communities, and this is actually a virtual reality lesson. And there's different slides that it takes you through. If you ever forget a code or a student gets kicked out, the code is always up in the top left. And so it lets you kind of take a look at different types of communities. And you can have students, this is projected on their screen as well. And you have the option to hide students' names and different things like that. Right now, I have no students participating in this lesson. And you'll go through and it gives you different ones. You can always skip to different slides if you know which one you want to start with. It's a quick overview. It gives you lesson objectives. And then there's these little activities that are built into all the lessons. You can take a poll. It says, which type of community do you think you live in? Students, this will pop up on their screen and they will have the opportunity to answer. When they answer, it will pop up in real time. So you just have to hit share and this will pop up for them as they answer, it'll filter through. And you can hide the students' names uh, if you want it to be anonymous or you can keep it public and they can see their names as they answer. And it just, it's really awesome. It takes you through the pacing and everything like that goes through different types, definitions, things like that. And then it takes us, this one particularly will take us on a virtual field trip. And what I do with my students when we do this lesson, we go through our virtual field trip and then I ask the students, what kind of community do you think this is? And we have a, a discussion about it. So it says urban buildings often have a lot of advertisements on them, so it'll allow them to draw their own advertisement. Um, and they can do that right from their own computer. What I really like about this is it gives students an opportunity to see, for this particular lesson, to see a community that's not like their own. We live in a very rural community, and students don't often see very much more than their school and their home. So it's really cool for them to be able to kind of take a look in a 360 view of another community. And like I said, I did not create this activity. I just took it right out of the library. It's super teacher friendly. And, you know, sometimes if we're running short on planning time, things like that, you don't have time to create your own. The library is stocked full of awesome lessons that you can just go with your teacher. Of course, you know, it makes it easier to uh, for students to have their own device, uh, but this can also be done without one.
And I love what I love most about it is it always has like built in activities for them to do at their own seats to kind of check for understanding as we go. It's not all teacher. It's a lot of this is student led. So, you know, a rural community is where few people live. And this is like showing them so you can drag and drop with already was already dragged. But, you know, and then you hit done. And then there's other polls. And it's like, what do you want to live in when you grow up? So it's not a lot of like text to self. And that's at the end. And here's always more credits and things like that. So then if you want to leave the session, you can always resume it later. We'll just say yes. And there's all different types of lessons you can do. Uh, you can upgrade. Uh, with upgrade, there comes a lot of other things that go with it. But, you know, it's really cool what you can just do for free. So if you wanted to create your own lesson, you just hit new and hit lesson. Maybe. Here we go. You know, so you, it, and it takes you through step by step. It's super teacher friendly, like I said. So you can make your own interactive lessons in Nearpod. You can already upload PowerPoints or PDFs, things like that you already have. Or you can just start right, right from scratch. You want to add a slide. So you can add web content, an activity, um, or your own just information, depending on what you want to do. So if you want to add an activity, it pops up right here. Do you want open ended questions, polls, quizzes, draws? or collaborates. If I wanted to make a poll, so we could ask our students, what is your favorite color? Blue or pink? And then you have these, allow students to react multiple, to select multiple options. Um, for this one, I will not, so they can only select one. Um, right here, I could add answers if I wanted to add I could add orange, I could add purple, however many you want to add, there really is no limit. And here you can add supporting pictures or videos, things like that. So you scroll down to the bottom, you save it, and then you just add a different slide. So each one of these will be a slide. You can add a slide, this time maybe I want to add web content. But I can't do this, this is the, one of those premium features I was talking to you about. So you can only use certain types of slides for the free version. So we'll go ahead and um, say I want them to see www.gmail or if I found a really cool YouTube video, I could just add it right in here. I'm not going to do that at this time. Um, or you could add content. If you wanted to do that, you could do a virtual field trip, sway, a slideshow, a live Twitter stream, PDF viewer, audio, video, things like that. You can just add right from here. And then you can hit before you're done, just hit preview. So that was this. And it'll generate a preview for it before you actually publish it to your students. So here we go. That's our first slide. What is your favorite color? Pink, blue, orange, or such. And it'll show you exactly what it'll look like. And then we go back. So those are just some of the different things you can do. If you choose that this is the one you want to work with, you just go ahead and hit save and exit. And it says you have to have at least two slides. So I won't be able to save this one, which is okay. i take you back one more thing I want to show you. If you look at the Explore, which is the big library that Nearpod actually just gives you, I always filter my lessons for free. So I could do free. Um, maybe I want to teach a math lesson. I teach third grade and I want to do a full lesson. So let, we'll narrow it down and search for us. So here we go. We've got elapsed time, equivalent fractions, different things, understanding fractions. So we're about to start teaching multiplication. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click on this one. And right here in this blue button, you just hit add to my library. You can check it out right from here. It lets you preview it to see if it's something that you'd like goes through different learning objectives. Awesome, what I absolutely love. 
is it always ties in Common Core standards and objectives, which is awesome. So it goes through different things like that. And this is actually a video. Down here, you can hit play if you want to. It's about four minutes long. It's embedded right into the PowerPoint, so there's not a lot of clicking different resources. And then if I like it, I would hit add to my library. Go back to my library and it is right there for me. So yeah, so this is just Nearpod, super awesome, free resource for teachers. Um, I hope you check it out.